Hey yo, what's up my little coders? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to send a put request in Java. But before that, let me start with a super quick recap of a theory. A put request is one of the HTTP methods which is usually used to update an existing resource. And when you're updating an existing resource using a put request method, obviously you need to send some data which would represent this updated resource. This data is usually called request body. The request body of a put request should contain a complete representation of the resource, meaning that if let's say your resource contains three attributes and you want to update just one of these three attributes, you still need to send the remaining two attributes as part of the same request, even though if they stay unchanged, because otherwise the unchanged attributes will be overridden with the default values or in some other cases the request just would fail. Also, in order to send a put request to update an existing resource, we obviously need to have an API that would allow us to do it. For that, we are going to use today a service which is called restfulapi.dev. This service supports main HTTP methods, including put. It's free and doesn't require any registration, so it's perfect for learning and practicing. However, before sending our requests in Java, let's first of all do it through the Postman. And for that, in order to update an existing object, we first of all need to create it so that we will have something what to update. Let's use a post request method for that. Let's just grab the post request URL. Let's go to Postman. Let me paste it here. Let's change from get to post. Let's provide exactly the same body as from the example here. Then, because we're sending JSON, let's change the request body type from text to JSON. And let's try to hit the send button. Perfect. We got a status code equal to 200, meaning that the request was successful. You can see that the API returned the data which we have sent to it. The API also generated the unique ID, which is good. We will need it for put request. Now, let's try to fetch this data which we just created by using a get request method. So uh, for get request method, we just basically need to paste this URL and we need to change our ID from seven as from the example here to the ID which we just have generated. If I put this ID here and if I send the get request, yes, you can see that we are successfully able to fetch our object which we just created recently. So, we created an object, we can fetch it, let's try to update it using put. Okay, so you can see that the URL of a put request will be similar as for the get request, so we can just copy. Let's change the request type from get to put. Let's try to copy the same body as we have sent to create a new object. And let's try to just basically modify this body a bit. So we completely changed the request body. Now let's try to send this put request to update an existing object. You can see here that yes, we've done it successfully. We got a status code equal to 200. Everything is good. You can see here that API updated the fields. Let's try to send the get request again to validate it as well. Yes, the data has changed completely. So we have successfully sent a put request using a postman. Now let's try to do exactly the same, but in Java. So in order to send a put request in Java, let's first of all define our put request URL. Let's use exactly the same URL as we used for our put request in Postman. With this URL, let's open the HTTPS connection so that we can connect to this URL in our Java code. Now, for our connection, we will need to specify some settings so that the API would understand what kind of request are we sending to it. Because we want to update an existing object, we specify that we are sending exactly a put request. Then we set do output to true. This means that we are saying to Java that as part of our request, we are also sending the request body. 
then we need to be specific about what type of request body are we sending. This API expects to receive a JSON file and the default value is equal to text. So, you know, we need to be specific here. Let's actually try to send this request because yes, we have the, the request URL. We specified all the settings. Now we are actually ready to send data to this API. Okay, so this part of code is in charge of sending the data to the API. You can see that we opened the output stream and then we basically are writing our bytes. So we are sending some data to the API and here we are sending a modified request body. I changed the name a bit and changed the data as well. So this will send the data to the API. However, we also want to see what API would reply to you. For example, what status code would it send to you? And by having a status code, you can identify whether your request was successful or not. Let's print out the status code which we get from the API. Elsa, let's print the response which API would send to us as well. Okay, so we would get the input stream from our connection and basically you will print what API responded to us. Now, let's see, you know, what's the current state of our uh, resource which we created a few minutes ago. So we can see here that the name is equal to YOA and there are two keys. Key one is like some random text and key two is like 777. We are going to update it with a different name which will be equal to YOA2 and with a different data. So it will have only one key instead of two keys and the key one would you know have the dummy data string. All right, if I run this code now, let's see whether our put request would be successful. Yes, we get a response code equal to 200. We can see here that yes, it was updated and there is a new data stored right now. Let's try to send a get request just to see a new data via the get request yes we can confirm that everything was updated successfully congratulations we've been able to successfully send a put request however as you can see here we are actually sending the string which represents a json object since it's java and since it's object oriented programming language most probably you would like you know to send some objects to override this data because how can you construct this uh, line of code programmatically? You want to somehow use the normal Java objects, right? For that, let's create an object which would represent basically the request body which we are sending. How can we do that? So it's very simple. I already created one. Basically, it should be a simple Podro plain old Java object. Since we're using this uh, RESTful API.dev today, we need to follow the rules of this service. So this service usually accepts two fields. One is the name, which is like a string. And second field is data, which represents a customizable JSON object. So we can have like different values uh, with different types inside. So for that, we can just create a hash map, basically. However, keep in mind that in your object, you need to have exactly the same variable names as they appear in the API. Otherwise, you know, these uh, fields just will not be mapped. So be careful. And after that, I created just a simple constructor and also simple getters and setters. That's it. Now, if you want to send this object, let's first of all create a dummy object basically so that we can send it. Let's create a product. Let's call it product updated. So here we can pass our name. Let's say that our product is, uh, I don't know, iPhone 12. And okay, let's say that our data for now is equal to now. And let's create this data.
okay, we have our object. How can we send this object to an API? If we say, I take this object and if I replace this string, which represents a JSON with this object, you can see here that we get an error. And we get an error because, yes, the write bytes function requires a string and not an object. How can we take this object and convert it to the string which would represent a JSON object? How can we do that? We can do it very, very easily. If you leverage one library, if you use the object mapper class from this library. If I try to import this class, you can see that I cannot do it. This is because object mapper comes from the external library. It comes from the faster XML library. In order to import it, I can just go to my Gradle settings, uh, sorry, to my build.gradle file, and I can paste this line of code to import external library. FasterXML.Jackson. If I do it and go back to my code, now you can see that I can import this class. And in order to convert my coin Java object to a JSON string, I can just simply take this object mapper instance and uh, I can call another method from it. Write value as string and I can just pass my object and I can store this as a request body string. And now, if I take this string and pass it to write bytes function, now you see I don't get any errors. And now, this string should represent an object which we just created as a JSON string. If I try to run my code right now, let's see whether it will compile successfully. Yes, and it did, and you can see that we got a status code equal to 200. Now, let me go back to Postman. Let's try to send a GET request. You can see here that the data was updated successfully, and we used the PUT request method for that. So guys, I hope it was simple and clear to you. However, you might be wondering, okay, for a PUT request, you need to pass the full representation of an object. You know, is it possible to do a partial update of an object without passing all the attributes of an object? And guys, yes, it is possible. However, not using put. You need to use patch request method for that. And I'm going to talk about the patch request method. And I'm going to show you how to send a patch request in Java in my next video. And please, if this video was useful to you, give it a like as well. Thank you guys and see you later.